Hi, I'm Ellie Johnston. Let's talk about bioenergy in inroads. Bioenergy is any type of energy produced from organic material or biomass. This could range from different types of electricity generations to fuels that can then be used in different forms of transport. Within inroads, we can tax or subsidize bioenergy here on the main interface of inroads. We can go a layer deeper and go into the advanced view where we can find three different categories of feedstocks for bioenergy. Feedstocks are the raw material used to produce uh, bioenergy. So we have this for wood feedstocks. This can range from uh, using wood for home heating or cooking all the way on up to utility scale electricity generation. Then we have crop feedstocks. This could look like growing um, corn for use in ethanol production, which is could be used as type can be used as a type of biofuel, and also waste and other feedstocks, which can be also used for different forms of energy generation. Now, one of the big limitations on how much bioenergy can grow is these feedstocks and the availability of them. We only have so much wood availability, crop, and waste availability to be used as sources of energy uh, for bioenergy production. I'm going to turn it now over to our executive director here at Climate Interactive, Drew Jones, who's going to specifically talk about wood feedstocks and some of the carbon dynamics associated with wood bioenergy. We'll start, of course, with the first main effect of bioenergy, and that is emissions into the atmosphere. I'll click on the left to the area of CO2 emissions. Scroll down here to CO2 gross emissions from bioenergy. That is burning trees, burning biomass, and then the uh, also uh, release from the soils over a longer period of time from the harvesting. And note here, I'm really focusing on forest bioenergy when I do this analysis. You can see that it's going up over time. And what we're going to do is experiment with, what if we subsidize the industry more? Down here, I just hit to the right and we have a subsidy and you can see the blue line increase and we have more gross emissions. This new thing that we have now will be to keep track of the ability of the forests on Earth to pull carbon out of the atmosphere. That's going to be in this area of CO2 removals and removals from land. So when we do that test, what we see is the blue line slightly dropping below the black line through the 2060s and then slightly increasing out in the very end of the century. So what this is showing is that there's lower capacity of the forest to pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and put it into soils and into the biomass itself. This is due to overall degradation. What we have is less land in the oldest trees and more land in younger trees that remove less carbon. Forest degradation leads to a decrease here and we keep track of that. Now, when we put these two ideas together, both the gross emissions in and then the change, the removals, that gives us the net. The overall net emission from forest bioenergy is another graph down here. I'm going to scroll down to CO2 net emissions from forest bioenergy. We can see that it's always a producer of net emissions throughout the whole century. So the other way to look at this net effect is in the stocks. That is, let's go look and see, well, how much carbon is in the soils and in the biomass and how much is in the atmosphere. We can see that net transfer. We have a graph now in forest, land, forestry, and food area, carbon in forests. So I'm going to undo the change that I did before to the baseline. And then on the right, I'll go to impacts and look at CO2 concentration. This is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. On the left, the brown area is carbon in soils, carbon in plants on top of it. 
And when I make this change, as I showed you before, it moves carbon out of soils and plants and releases them into the atmosphere. We can see them showing up in the atmosphere over on the right when the blue line slightly goes above the black line. Over on the left, you can see that small white wedge between the new version of carbon in soils and plants and then the thin black line, which is what it was in the baseline. All right, those are the two new big features, the sequestration, the three feedstocks, and a little bit of the big picture of how you can see the effect of overall bioenergy. Now, I was focusing there again on forest-based, wood-based bioenergy. I hope this was helpful. Go get them.